Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Torcakis. On the menu today we have double crusted salmon, couscous with spinach, and corn flour cake with cream cheese, yogurt frosting, and black cherries. So let's get started. The first thing I want to begin to work on is the salmon. Um, this is a double crusted salmon and um, we're going to make the crust in two different ways. So here I have four equal pieces, about a pound in total, but I've, that I've cut into four equal pieces. And to that I'm going to set it aside right now and make the, the topping. The first one that I'm going to make is a mixture of nuts with um, almonds and pistachios. So I'm going to use about a, a three tablespoons of almonds, finely crushed or diced or chopped. You can use a measuring spoon if you want to, but it doesn't have to be exact, so I'm just using a regular old tablespoon. And two tablespoons of chopped pistachios. This is a really easy recipe and it comes together really quick. So I'm going to mix that and to this I'm also going to add the zest of half, half a lemon. The zest is the peel that you grate. Of course you just want the skin part. You don't want that wet part in the, of the lemon, just the, the yellow part. So I'm going to mix that all together. And then I'm going to take my salmon pieces and put them in a baking dish. I'm also going to use about a teaspoon of red pepper flakes and I'm going to use my old method here, the hand teaspoon. There we go. Throw the, toss those in. If you got, this will give it a little bit of heat and if you want a little bit more you can certainly add more but I think this is enough for us. So to this, so now I'm going to start layering my crust and the first one is going to be the, I'm going to get, brush each, each piece of salmon with uh, some nice fresh um, extra virgin olive oil. Before I do that I want to add a little bit of salt to each piece. I find that doing it this way really gives me a good idea of how much I'm using. And now to this, I'm going to give it a nice generous brushing of olive oil. I'm also going to brush the bottom of the baking dish. And I've left the skin on on these, on these pieces of salmon because I find that it retains the, the, the juices a little more and it comes off so quickly, uh, quickly and easily once they're cooked that I'd rather do it that way than, um, than beforehand. So I'm going to put each one of these crosswise here on my baking dish. evenly spread out. And then with a with the tablespoon I'm going to spoon evenly the nut topping. This is so good. You want to come in on it from the side. You can use other nuts too. One of the popular nut that you could use is um, hazelnut. But I like the combination of the almonds and uh, the pistachios and I tend to have almonds at home more than I do hazelnuts. I want to use every little piece, every little amount of this topping because it's so good. Now one other thing I want to do to this because I think it helps with the browning uh, process afterwards is add just a, just a little bit 
just a little bit of breadcrumbs. You don't have to. This is this is my thing because I, I I feel that it makes it brown a little better. So we put this in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes. And you want to put it in a 400 degree oven. We're going to move on to the couscous. In this pot, I have a cup and a quarter of water so that I'm going to bring to a boil. All right, so here the water's boiling. And I'm going to add to the water a little bit of oil. Now, this is just water. If you wanted to, you could also use chicken broth to give it some flavor. But we decided with the fish today that uh, plain water with a little flavorings that we add would be, would, would be really good. So I'm just going to add about a tablespoon of um, olive oil just to flavor, flavor it a little bit. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of salt. I'm going to add a table, uh, cup of the couscous. Now this couscous, as you can see, is a little bigger than the one that we typically see. This is called Israelite couscous. Um, and it's just, it's got, it has a little bit more texture. But it's made the, from the same uh, you know, wheat flour. Give this a quick stir. Add a little bit of salt to taste. I'll probably add about half a teaspoon. So I'm going to cover this and let it cook for about eight minutes. And then I'm going to add some really nice um, baby spinach that, of course, we pick up from Calorisa's farm stand and garden center. As they provide um, a lot of the uh, produce and actually even the, the salmon uh, that we're using here today they don't just carry uh, fruits and vegetables, but they carry a whole array of other products as well. So this is spinach that I've already um, washed, as you can see with my thing that I always um, wash and then put it back in the bag with a paper towel. That way everyone in the house will know that whatever is in there has been washed or not, depending. And these are really uh, small baby leaves, but I'm going to give it a quick chop as well, just a rough chop because I'm adding it to the couscous. And I want to give, I want to keep the, uh, uh, the sizes, the size kind of relative. So I'm going to give this a rough chop just a little bit. I did it right on the paper towel. That way, save to uh, wash one more dish. Give this a quick stir. And so what this is doing, it's sort of cooking in the same way that rice would cook. So it's reabsorbing all the, the liquid uh, that it's in. And um, so, that, so if you have a flavorful liquid, that will be absorbed into the couscous. Remember, it's, couscous is essentially just a, a kind of a pasta because it's made from wheat, from wheat flour. Let's take a look at the couscous here. Oh, perfect. This looks like it's done. So now I'm going to add the spinach in. And I'm going to turn this off because I just want to wilt the spinach. I don't really want to cook them thoroughly. I'm going to toss it all together. You know, this would also make a great um, cold salad, too. There we go. I think I am going to add just a tiny bit more uh, olive oil in here, maybe a little bit more salt. But I'll wait for that, too. Like, each one can add uh, their own salt. Because I've added, uh, yeah, I think enough to season it. And then if somebody wants more, they can certainly add it. So here's my dish. Oh, wait till you see this. Look how beautiful that looks with the white and the green. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful, look at that. So we'll put that over here, and pretty soon the salmon should be done. 
So the salmon has been cooking for about 15 minutes at 400 degrees. Uh, 400 degrees. And so what I'm going to do now is um, here's the the half of that lemon that I've zested. And what I'm going to do is squeeze some lemon juice right on it. First, I'm going to squeeze it out. Then I'm going to spoon it on. Put a little, just a little teaspoon on each one. Oh, perfect. Actually, I think they're just a, they're ready. So I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice on top of each one. Oh, they smell great too. I'm just gonna uh, move this. I think 15 minutes was adequate. Is adequate time. Oh, time to plate it. Look at oh, and the smells fabulous. Look how pretty they look. So you want to add the lemon juice when they're very, very hot. Little help there. Look how perfect. Oh, there. And you see the breadcrumbs just really helped a little bit with the browning. I'm gonna collect some of this and drizzle it on top. Talking about healthy fats, these are like the perfect combination, olive oil, nuts, salmon. Certainly get plenty of your fatty acids uh, or your healthy fats that you need. Just make, have a, a couple of um, lemon slices to decorate a little bit so that it looks pretty with some coloring. Look at that. Okay. The next thing we're going to be working on is the cake. And uh, this is the uh, corn flour cake with cream cheese, yogurt, frosting, and black cherries. So in this bowl, I have three quarters of a cup of all purpose flour. And to this, I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of corn flour. You want to get the, the fine grind. And I'm going to need three quarters of a cup. This is such an easy cake. Simple. I think this one, two, three, four, maybe five ingredients. We'll count them as we go along. but. Oh, it's just it's just one of those simple and yet delicious cakes. A little more. So here we have three quarters of a cup of corn flour. We mix that in with the white flour, the all-purpose flour. And to this, I'm also going to add two teaspoons of baking powder. Mix it. I'm going to set this aside and work on the liquid part of the batter. This, that's the, those are the dry ingredients, not for the wet ingredients. The first thing I'm going to add is I'm going to need two whole eggs and three egg yolks. So. One egg. Two. 
I'm going to get the three egg yolks. Is one and three. I'm also going to need a cup and one third of um, confectionery sugar. So to my eggs, I'm going to break them up really quick, just a little bit before I add, I'm going to break up the eggs before I add the powdered sugar or confectionery sugar. There's one cup of sugar. I'm going to work that in a little bit. Then I'm going to add in the other third. I'm going to go around here with the uh, Bachelor to make sure that everything is getting mixed. Next thing I'm going to add is a third of a cup of canola oil. slowly put that in. One last ingredient is a teaspoon of vanilla flavoring. You want to use the real pure vanilla flavor, not the, not the imitation one. So now I'm going to start adding, now I'm going to add my dry ingredients and I like to do it in thirds. You want to be careful not to add all your dry ingredients at once. They just don't mix as well. So I'm going to do, I usually do it in thirds. This is one and here's the third. Do you want to do this in a slow setting? I only have it on number one. There we go. So now, again, you want to go back in with the spatula to make sure that everything's well mixed. Sometimes on the bottom or the, the, the sides don't, um, don't get mixed in, so you want to make sure that that happens. All right, so now I'm just going to pour this in a pre-prepared pan that I've already prepared. So uh, in my pre-prepared pan, what I've done is I've taken a little butter and coated the, the pan and then put some flour on it and shook it around because you want to make sure that you get a nice um, coating so the cake doesn't stick. Just pour this. This is an eight inch round cake. In 
so this is going to bake in a 400, excuse me, this is going to bake in a 350 degree oven for about 35 minutes. This um, size pan gives it some, a nice height. You could use a nine inch round pan or square, but it won't be, the height won't be there. All right, so this is going to go in the oven at 350 for 35 minutes. The next thing I'm going to work on is the cream cheese yogurt frosting. The first thing I'm going to take is about, um, I'm going to use about two to three tablespoons of cream cheese in here. And then I'm going to add some plain yogurt. All right, so I'm going to use about two to three, ta two tablespoons or so. Right in the bowl. All right. And then I'm going to add one cup of yogurt. Now I'm using uh, Greek yogurt, but you can use any kind of yogurt. Yogurt is, uh, the thickened kind is better though. Um, but you can use, I'm using 0% fat. You can use low fat, whole fat. Uh, it really doesn't matter. It's a matter of preference. So here's a cup of yogurt. So instead of just mixing the two together and then beating them up, I'm going to beat the, um, the cream cheese by itself first. And the reason I like to do this first by itself is that it, it helps with preventing the little, um, the little, um, the little lumps. I'm going to add the yogurt. Then I'm going to add a quarter cup of sugar, powdered sugar. That goes in. Actually, I, a little, I'm going to go around it, make sure that all the cream cheese is in with the yogurt. All right, now I just have to add one teaspoon of vanilla. So I have a teaspoon of vanilla. That goes in for flavor. And the frosting is done. Give it one final mix. And Here's the cake that we have, I've already made. So while well, the other one um, is baking, we can frost this one. And what I've done is the old trick with the paper, uh, with the wax paper on the bottom so that once you're done frosting, you just take the paper away and you've got a nice clean dish. I'm just gonna spoon this on. As you may already know, I don't make cakes very often, so they have to be rather special. My desserts tend to be more fruit-based. 
but I think this is going to be one that I might be making more frequently because it's so simple. Let's see if I have every spot here. How's that? Anything else? There we go. Beautiful. Yep. Perfect. You can be as creative as you'd like. Probably more creative than I am. As I said, cakes are not something I make too often, but enough. All right. So to this, we're not done yet. I'm going to add some uh, beautiful black cherries on top. These happen to be my favorite, my favorite topping, but you could use, I think, strawberry slices would look nice. Uh, strawberries and kiwi would be a nice addition, too. I think we use black cherries enough, so I thought this was a good place to use them. Put some, and you can serve some on the side as well. So now, we can take the wax paper off here. I'll probably mess it up anyways, but let's see. There we go, that perfect. Very nice, I think. And you know what? I'm going to have to cut a piece so you can see what the inside looks like. So I'm going to have to cut a piece. Let's see. How's that? Isn't that pretty? And we can add a few more black cherries. And you could drizzle some of the juice if you'd like as well. So here we have it, another delicious quick and fast meal that you can make in minutes and most of these ingredients you already have in your house I'm, I'm sure. Uh, so today we've made some delicious double crusted salmon where the crust brought, uh, formed with the oil and the second with the nuts on top and flavored with a little bit of uh, lemon juice at the last minute just when you take it out of the oven. Uh, we've also made some fast cooking Israelite couscous and tossed in some spinach for a little color and flavor and taste. And finally, we have made a delicious corn flour cake with cream cheese yogurt frosting and black cherries on top. And uh, these are recipes that um, we are working on for our next book. And so we also uh, wanna thank um, our uh, sponsor uh, for most of this stuff is um, Calorisa's Farm Stand and um, Garden Center. Um, but also, I want to thank you very much for joining us, and please do it again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.